Let's get into the giant mailbag. What crazy thing did City, City. do this week? It's time for Mattress Running the Numbers. Ready for the main event? The main event. Frequent Miler on the air starts now. Today's main event, avoiding Amex's pop-up prison. I don't want to be a prisoner. I don't want to be a prisoner. No, no one wants to be a <laughs> pop-up prisoner or any kind of prisoner, really. But, you know, there's Amex doesn't seem to like people who just sign up for their cards for the welcome bonuses and don't do anything else. And then those people like my son as an example, <laughs> end up in pop-up prison where when, when he goes to sign up for a new card, a pop-up shows up saying, you know, you can sign up for this card, but you're not eligible for a welcome bonus. And wait, are well, you telling then, me your son's been in pop-up prison and you haven't bailed him out yet? Haven't yet. <laughs> <laughs> the bailout process is not clear. So we're going to be talking about how to avoid getting in there in the first place. So you don't end up waiting for your dad to bail you out, <laughs> which he doesn't know how to do. <laughs> Seems like a good topic to discuss then. So then I, I think, think so. I think then we should probably drag out the giant mailbag. Is there a mail giant this mailbag week? time? There is. This mail it comes from you can. It, it rhymes with toucan. Uh, you can <laughs> says, you frequently mention that airlines no longer have change fees. The fares that have no change fees are routinely 30% or more, uh, more expensive than basic economy in my experience. I think you rarely choose basic economy since you have airline status or prefer premium domestic seating. However, the fares that a vast majority of people book do not have free changes. Saying that change fees have been eliminated is a misrepresentation. <laughs> well, that's, I mean, that was an interesting piece of feedback. And I think that if you live somewhere where you're booking a lot of Delta flights, that's a great point because Delta flights are indeed often basic economy and the searches I've done lately are the cheapest anyway, are basic economy. But the thing is, when we're talking about change fees, we're usually talking about award tickets in terms of you know whether or not there's free changes. And while it's true that none of the major airlines are offering free change fees on basic economy, I don't think, unless Greg's going to correct me on that in a second, okay. uh, I think Delta is the only one that I've seen offering basic economy on award tickets. Now, I'm, that's not to say that there isn't any others, but I, I, I did a whole bunch of searches, for instance, for the Southwest Companion Pass post that I wrote this week, and I didn't see basic economy even offered as an award with any of the other airlines, just Delta. Yeah, if I remember right, I think American introduced it for a while and then backed off. And, and so I'm not really sure what happened there, or maybe my memory is wrong, but either way, I think you're right. That's all I've seen in recent times for the uh, domestic airlines, which is what we're talking about for no change fees. So if you're booking an award with most of them, except for Delta, you uh, are likely to be able to do, you know, do free changes on that award. Um, but, you know, you can is right that if you buy basic economy, either with cash or with miles in the case of Delta, then it's not freely changeable. Um, right, so, right, which is yeah. a good point. But uh, but I think most of the time when we're talking about you no know, change fees, we're talking about positioning flights or backups and things like that, which you would want to book something flexible for those. I think just naturally right. wouldn't be looking to book basic economy. And then in the difference in price, I, you know, I think that, that that may be true with cash tickets. I don't pay close attention to cash tickets because I don't book that many of them. Uh, but when it comes to awards, for instance, I don't think, at least based on the searches I've done lately, I haven't noticed a very big difference in the cost between basic economy and main cabin with Delta. So I think you know, for me, it would be worth usually choosing main cabin over basic economy with Delta domestically anyway, because it's not that much of a buy up. Right. Right. And the other thing is uh, it with Delta. And I think this is true with the others too. So book the main cabin and then keep checking the award price afterwards, because you can actually, I've done this right from the mobile app. You can, you can say, uh, change your, your ticket, basically. You click a button to change it and pick the same exact flight to rebook at the lower price and they'll refund the miles, the extra miles. So uh, it's not unusual for the price to fluctuate. And so, you know, it's definitely worth to check in on it uh, now and again before your flight and, and perhaps uh, rebook it and get extra miles back. So you might end up paying as little as basic economy or even less 
if you, you know, hit the timing right. So right, another, right. another tip there. And, and that's true with cash also, uh, you know, especially with, right. if you're booking anything that's not basic economy anyway, I wrote a post, I think last year, because I booked, I rebooked a United flight, I think five times in the space of a week because it kept dropping in price. <laughs> I just kept rebooking yeah. it and getting the difference back as a credit. So, uh, you know, it's worth keeping an eye on your flight bookings these days with variable pricing and no change fees. Right, right. I still, I still don't like getting credits back as either. much as yeah. I like getting miles, miles back. back. You know, yeah. miles you can keep alive forever, and with some airlines they never expire. But you know, with with uh, those credits, they always expire. So that's that's a downside. But still, it's way better than getting getting nothing back. Exactly, exactly. Than paying the higher price. Yep. Okay. So that was I, I have thought a great piece of feedback. So excellent. Thank you for that. You can and a good topic to discuss. So now what we got to talk about is what crazy thing did American Amex. Express. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What crazy thing did American Express do? Well, you know, maybe it's what they're not doing. They're, they're not <laughs> offering some people, it seems, the chance to refer friends to other cards. We've had a few reports come in in our Frequent Miler Insiders Facebook group from people who I know have been around the game for a long time. So they're not new to referring friends. And, and they've said that they're clicking on uh, the place where they would expect to get a referral offer. There's a few different places in your online account where you can get to the referral offer and it's telling right. them your card is not eligible to participate in the referral campaign. So they're coming up with an error page and they can't generate a referral from many of their cards. I've, we've had this report on platinum cards. And we've had this report on some other cards, uh, membership rewards cards, cash back cards, et cetera. And some of those people are able to generate links for some of their Amex cards, but not for others. That's nuts, isn't it? It is. It's totally nice, especially when you consider that some people are seeing a referral offer in their Amex offers section of the website, clicking on that and then being told You're not eligible. this card is not eligible. Yeah. Um, now, I think I have a solution. Uh, <laughs> at least it has worked for me consistently. I've had that happen quite a bit over the last month or so, but just pressing refresh once or twice on the on the browser screen has changed it to make the referral offer come up. So I think it's just a bug in their website and that that's an easy way to do it. I, I would also, if that doesn't work, I would try, you know, try the uh, mobile app and initiate a uh, referral that way. Or if you started with mobile app, switch to your desktop browser, whichever. But yeah, it seems I just assumed it was some weird like cookie issue where it saved a cookie before. And I mean, I like to say that's no longer valid. I mean, yeah, I mean, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's, a darn, it's a darn cookie jar. <laughs> so refresh, refresh, and let us know if that works for you. Ho hopefully it does. But I, you know, and the thing is, when I've heard this a few times, I've heard people say, oh, maybe they just don't want me to get any more referrals or I've had too many referrals. And, and trust me, that's not it. You know, I, I, <laughs> I haven't I haven't had trouble generating referral links. And of course, Greg and I as bloggers have gotten plenty of referrals over time. So if they're going to block somebody from getting referrals, they'd block us probably uh, sooner than than the average person who's going to refer two or three people. So uh, so that's not it. It must be some sort of a glitch. So hopefully that refresh works. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. All right. It is time now for mattress running the numbers. What do we have in store for mattress running this week? Marriott. Marriott's got us interested in mattress running. Maybe. I don't know. I have to, I have to consult with Greg, the frequent miler and see whether or not it's worthwhile. So this week it was announced that the Marriott Bonvoy Boundless card, that's the Chase card, what was formerly known as the Marriott Plus, right? The Marriott Rewards or whatever it was, plus card when the, <laughs> the conversion happened. So now it's the boundless mm -hmm. card from Chase, the card that's available from Chase, the consumer card, $95 annual fee. It earns two points per dollar on most purchases. They just announced this week that it'll earn three points per dollar on gas, dining, grocery purchases, up to $6,000 in combined purchases per year. But more importantly, what I want to talk about here is they announced that you'll also get one elite night credit for every $5,000 spent with no cap on the number of elite nights you can earn. Now, I guess the question is twofold. First of all, does it make mm -hmm. sense to max out that $6,000 spend or at least do 5,000 of it in those bonus categories for three points per dollar and an elite night? And more importantly, since that, that bonus category is capped at 6,000 in combined purchases, does it make sense to keep spending at 2X on the card to get your 2X plus an elite night credit? 
What do you think, Greg? Should we mattress yeah. run our way to status at $5,000 a pop? It's a great question. Um, first, let me say that I recently updated and republished my guide to shortcuts to Marriott Platinum Elite status. And I didn't have this in there because the, this thanks wasn't a thing. At thanks that for point. doing my post roast for me, Greg. There you go. <laughs> there you go. There you go. I didn't, I didn't like uh, use my psychic abilities to put that in ahead of time, but uh, obviously it will uh, appear in there very soon. Maybe even by the time you listen to this episode. Anyway, um, the, the, I think it's worth looking at the opportunity cost of that spend. So we often have talked in the past about how spending on a Marriott card to get two points per dollar is not a good bet compared to many other cards you can you can have. And just for example, use a 2% cash back card like the City Double Cash. Uh, you'd be getting, obviously with the Double Cash, you're getting 2% cash back. With the Marriott card, you're getting two points per dollar. So the opportunity cost, you're basically paying one penny per Marriott point to um, buy those Marriott points and instead of using your double cash card. And in our past, you know, uh, estimates of Marriott point value, it's more, it's been closer to about 0.6 of a cent. So you're getting far less than that. So, you know, if we say that, that Marriott points are worth about 0.6 of a cent, um, then getting two points per dollar, that's like 1.2% back. And so you're losing almost 1% back by not spending with your double cash card. Um, so let's make the math easier, right? Mm -hmm. Let's just let's just say Marriott points are worth half a cent each, and so the value at two points per dollar is is one percent back. Otherwise, you can get two percent back. So your opportunity cost is one percent of your spend. That's what you're losing. So five thousand dollars spend, you're basically losing fifty bucks. If I did my math right mm -hmm. in my head, yeah, you're you're losing fifty dollars in cash back. Um, by by buying these Marriott points at a half cent each instead, and 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 so um, there you go. You have a number now of like what it costs you to buy these elite nights towards elite status. So fifty bucks a night. That's not that's not that bad, you know. It, I mean, a lot of people who are close to the next level of status, which. Let me say the two levels of status worth pursuing, in my mind, platinum status, because uh, it gives you a number of perks at, at that level once you hit 50 nights per year. And then uh, titanium status gives you a few more perks, notably also United Silver status at 75 nights. And uh, for various reasons, I, I wouldn't recommend trying to... Um, mattress run your way to any other status. So those are the two to consider. And, you know, if you're close to one of those thresholds, spending 50 bucks a night in opportunity cost is, I, don't, I think that's reasonable. Yeah. You know, I guess it could be, you know, when you do it that way, you're, you're right. It, it certainly could be a reasonable option. It's probably better than what you're going to pay if you were to go to a hotel and pay though. I have to say, you'd have to probably do the math and figure out how many points you would earn based on the stay and how much it's really costing you for the night. But it's probably less than what you'll find, at least in many markets uh, for a hotel. So you probably can't book a mattress run for less than that. Now, whether you could book a mattress run at a low level Marriott for you know a low enough number of points that that's more attractive, I don't know, maybe, uh, but it's questionable. So I, I mean, by that token, it's not necessarily bad. The thing you really have to be careful about here, I think, is making sure that you're not exceeding your target status level by any nights at all. Because <laughs> if you spend point. and you go even yeah. to 51 nights on the year, then you didn't get that $50 it's in value. It's a total waste. So, uh, so you have to be really careful about you know how much you spend and how many nights you're going to stay and know how many nights you're going to stay. Because if you overshoot 
by anything, then you've just lost a whole bunch of value for no reason. You've gotten 1.2% right. cash back essentially for no good reason. Right, so. right. I guess one one exception to that I would say is let's say you have a big trip to St. Regis Bora Bora, for example. And so you want to get that free breakfast and True. other you know upgrades and things like that ahead of time. It could make sense to spend your way to platinum status before the trip, enjoy the benefits, even though it'd take you over. There you, and and that's that's a good point too. Although, of course, in that situation, you have to ask yourself, okay, so how much is breakfast per night? It's a you know hundred dollars sure. per day for two people. So, okay, how many elite nights are you willing to buy? Then it depends on how many nights you're going to be yep. there. But you know, got to do the math. I mean, which is just typical. I mean, you always have to do that kind of math and determine whether or not it's worthwhile. So there you go. It might be. And how about the three X categories? Are you interested in those? Is that exciting for you? The three X? I mean, would you do your spend at the three X categories? I mean, even at three X, it's not exciting. Like <laughs> it, it gets to where it is, you know, roughly similar to a 2% cashback card in value. <laughs> and, uh, but it's only in certain categories and it's capped at, what was it? $6,000 a year spend. Yeah. So no, I'm, yeah, I'm not interested in that. It doesn't, doesn't really move the needle much. Okay. Well, very no. good. So we, we mattress ran that. We did our crazy thing. I think that means it's time for the main event. The main event, avoiding Amex's pop-up prison. So, <clears throat> otherwise known as the episode, the, uh, Greg's son wishes he had heard ahead of time, <laughs> right? Or the, the podcast <laughs> he wishes he could go back in time and listen to. I don't know. Right. Yes. Yeah, so, pop-up, avoiding pop-up prison. Right. I don't want to be in right. pop-up prison, Greg. How do I stay out? No, you don't. Let me tell you a bit about what led us to pick this topic first. I, I published a post. What will be next last week by the time you listen to this, most likely, um, about how to sort of keep a Amex Platinum card for free after rebate forever. And one part of the whole idea is to serially sign up for different flavors of Platinum cards. Basically, <laughs> if you think of it as there's four different types of Amex Platinum cards that give you all kinds of great perks. And by signing up for, for one and uh, getting the earning the welcome bonus on it, and um, that welcome bonus is usually worth more than the card's annual fee. So that's why I consider it like free after rebate if you do that. Then after a year, you cancel that card, sign up for a different flavor of the platinum card, and so on and so on. And become a, a serial signer upper. Serial signer upper, yeah. Mm. Uh, if you, you know, if you're into, <laughs> if you're into your 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 Cheerios and whatnot, you know, uh, then that sounds really good, doesn't it? Yum, yum. But, but uh, there but. is there's there's a not yummy downside of that, which is that if that's all you do is sign up for Amex cards for the bonus and cancel it after a year you will end up in pop up prison, and so you won't be able to do a plan like this. <laughs> Um, because it's going to pop up a thing saying, sure, you can apply, but you're not going to get the welcome bonus. So, you know, no too rebate bad for, for you. you. <laughs> right, <laughs> right, right. No free after rebate for you. Not free after no rebate. Essentially. <laughs> right. so, uh, exactly. Yeah, so that's not good. Exactly. That, nobody wants that. No. And, 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 and I, am I wrong in saying that if that was all you did after two or three times, you're, you're probably not going to make it to five years on that, right? I mean, you're going to be, probably yeah. in pop-up prison after maybe the second time you try that. Right. Uh, right. Right. I mean, yeah. Um, you know, thinking back to my son, it could be longer. He, he signed up for maybe, um, I would, I would think about six or seven uh, Amex cards that he canceled after a year before actually landing in, in yeah. what appears to be permanent pop-up prison. Um, although as an aside, it seems to be a consumer prison, not a business prison. <laughs> He's been able to get business cards still. So anyway, um, it, uh, what was your question? <laughs> but so, so I, I was saying it's not going to last. The party isn't oh. going to last that long, probably. Although yeah. I don't know, yeah. maybe, maybe it will. So, knows, so we don't know say. how long it'll last, but, but it's inevitable if you keep doing this and only that um, it's not going to be good for your long-term prison avoidance health. So, <laughs> We have a theory about what keeps you out of prison, but you know, I, I do need to caution that nobody except some people in at Amex, and I would, I would guess that it's very few people at Amex know the real 
story of how to avoid it. But one uh, belief that I have is that um, regularly spending on Amex cards and regularly renewing uh, Amex cards that have annual fees are two factors that I think um, will keep you safe because Amex will look at you and see that you're a valuable customer. And the fact that you're, you know, sometimes signing up for cards, you know, I think their algorithm is going to say, well, they might be a valuable customer for this new card as well. So um, that has definitely worked for me over the years. I, I haven't personally been in that kind of pop-up prison. And by that kind, I mean, there's another kind of pop-up, which is, which is the lifetime rule one where it, you know, it, if you try to sign up for a card you've had before, it pops up a thing saying, basically, you've had this card before, so you're not eligible for the welcome bonus. Fine. That's, that's a reasonable thing. Um, that tends to disappear after about six or seven years, but there's no hard and fast rule on that, uh, what lifetime means there. Okay. I just talked myself into a long so, side tangent. <laughs> so, how, so how do I avoid going to prison, Greg? I mean, that's really yeah. all I want to know. How do I avoid going to prison? So the idea is that if you ha- if you just keep signing up for cards and closing them and not spending on them, right. just, just for the welcome bonus, if you sign up, you just make the spend for the welcome bonus. Don't do any more spend, close it, open another one, just do the spend for the sign up bonus, close it, blah, blah. They're, they don't like that. So right, right, okay, right. I know I shouldn't so, do that, but what, what should I do? So let's talk about cards where where you can spend on them regularly. You could pay the annual fees and it's worth it to you because you're getting something valuable out of that whole proposition and hopefully keeping you in Amex's good graces so that you could also keep signing up for other cards and getting the welcome bonuses. I made a list of, of uh candidates for this discussion and we can talk about with each one real quick like is this a good choice um let me start with a card that we've often raved about but i'm not sure it's the best choice it, the blue business plus so this is their their business card that earns membership rewards points it earns two points per dollar on all spend up to 50k spend per year so it's an awesome card for just earning membership rewards with no in any category of spend, which is, which is fantastic. Um, the only reason that I hesitate on like saying this is the one is that it doesn't have an annual fee. So I don't know that Amex will kind of look at you favorably necessarily for keeping in this card and spending a lot on it. I also wonder whether spending a lot on the business side will keep you out of pop-up prison on the consumer side. Uh, you know, so yeah. I, I don't know if that will make I me mean, like you use your son as an example, who seems to be in pop-up prison on the consumer side, but not on the business yep. side. So I would think that if it transferred over, uh, then probably you wouldn't have that issue because I think uh, he's probably done some spend on his business cards that he's opened. So hoping that that would get him out of pop-up prison and it seems he hasn't gotten out. So apparently bail is significantly higher than (laughs) than what we may have expected. (laughs) Uh, So yeah, so I don't know if that's going to necessarily help. I mean, it's a good card to have. You want to have that card because it keeps your membership rewards points alive. It keeps them transferable. So you can have that and open and close everything else and just keep that card active, you know, pop it out and use it now and then when it's advantageous for you. Uh, but that's not necessarily the one that's going to keep you out of pop-up prison. I agree. So I agree. Okay. So, so if we want to stay out of pop-up prison, Greg, I'm, I'm going to get back to the question again. How do I stay out of prison, Greg? Like what yeah. do I have to do? All right. So one of my favorite options is the Amex gold card. So that's $250 a year. So, you know, I think just paying that annually will make Amex at least a little bit happy with you. And, but it also has, uh, it's good to spend on, especially in for grocery stores in the U S because you get earned four points per dollar on up to $25,000 spent at grocery stores and you earn four X for dining worldwide. So those two, great, you know, earning of membership rewards points. You also get a monthly $10 per month Uber credit, which can be used also for Uber Eats. And you get $10 uh, sort of miscellaneous, mostly dining related credits for like things like Grubhub and box.com and mm-hmm. uh, Cheesecake, Cheesecake Factory. Factory. <laughs> Ruth's yeah. Chris Steakhouse. I, I have uh, not Shake done a good job of weirdest use- combination. <laughs> right, right. I have not done a good job of using those credits, but you know, e- even if you just value that a tiny bit, 
maybe you value the 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 Uber one. I value the Uber one more because I use Uber Eats enough to um, you, you know always use the credits. Same for me, uh, and I didn't always. I used to, if you've listened to the show for a long time, then you'll know that in the past I didn't value the Uber credits very much at all because I didn't use Uber all that much because it doesn't exist where I live. So, you know, there's like places I go where sometimes I'll do pickup or that sort of thing, but I was like lukewarm. I wasn't going to go out of my way to use 10 bucks. But since I have other cards now in the household that also get Uber Eats credits, now I make an effort to use it. So now I use it basically every month. So I agree. Yeah. I value the Uber one a lot more, but I'm not going to go out of my way to use the $10 Grubhub credit or, you know, find a Shake Shack to you know, buy a right. burger hat or whatever <laughs> exactly. the case may be. So it's, yeah, but, but plenty of people do and plenty, plenty of people, people do. People get a lot of value out of that. But um, so basically with those credits, it, it ends up sort of net costing you not that much, um, or, or you could say you're getting a lot of value from the annual fee and you're getting the um, very good earning potential. That combination I think is, is really good. And, and since most people spend a fair amount on, on grocery and dining, you know, I think Amex will be pretty happy with an average family um, that has that card. Now, if you, yeah. Now, if you don't spend that much on dining and grocery, but you do spend let's say around uh, $6,000 per year on grocery. <laughs> There's two, there are two cards that'll, that, that bonus um, up to 6K of spend in, on grocery. And uh, one is the blue cash preferred. So you get 6% cash back on grocery, uh, US grocery, um, up to 6,000 per year. And the everyday preferred earns membership rewards points, um, it earns three points per dollar at grocery on the first $6,000 spend. But if you also spend, make 30 purchases per billing cycle, you get a 50% bonus. So basically you can earn up to four and a half membership rewards points per dollar on that 6K spend. So those are two cards where if the gold card is, is too rich for you, these are $95 cards where you can get good value from your grocery spend up to 6,000 a year. Which of those do you prefer out of those two? So the blue cash preferred 6% back on up to 6K spend, everyday preferred four and a half points per dollar if you do 30 transactions a month, 30 purchases a month. So which of those yeah. is the better card to get for grocery? Uh, yeah, I've, I, of those two, I mean, not can, counting other, not looking at other bonus categories, mm -hmm. I prefer the uh, blue cash preferred just because it doesn't have those hoops to jump through to make sure you, you do 30, uh, you know, purchases per billing cycle to get, to get a good rate of return. And so that's, that's one I would pick there. I agree. What about you? No, I totally agree because mm -hmm. if you don't make 30, then you're only earning three membership rewards points per dollar spent. And I'm not too excited about paying two cents of membership rewards points, same kind of opportunity cost right. thing we talked about before. You're essentially right. paying two cents for every point and that's not worthwhile to me. Even at the four and a half versus six percent, I'm kind of like, eh, yeah, yeah. There's enough other ways to earn membership rewards points. I'd probably take the six percent. And the six thousand dollars spend is, I think, an easier or, or an easy um, amount for a lot of people. That comes out to about one hundred and fifteen dollars per week over fifty two weeks. So that's, I think, probably a reasonable amount of groceries. So easy to get your value back there. And I agree, I would take blue cash preferred out of the two, even though we have the everyday preferred in my household. <laughs> I've definitely questioned the value because I don't do thirty transactions a month on it anymore. There's just too many other ways to get a lot of points to make that worthwhile. Right, right. So so now of, of the cards that give like everybody decent value, uh, I think that's, that's it, we, that we've covered the, the ones I recommend in, in that area. Now we're going to go into ones that are specific to certain brands. So like if you like Delta, if you like Hilton, if you like Marriott, then there are opportunities there. So for example, let's start with Delta. So Delta, Amex has seven <laughs> different <laughs> Delta cards. Seven. Um, <laughs> so there's the no fee consumer blue card. Forget about that because no fee and that's not going to help you with, with this. But there's a gold card, a platinum card, and a, and a reserve card, which are they have two versions of each one, a business version and a, and a um, personal version of each one of those. And they're pretty much, they're very, very similar personal and business versions. So I'm not going to distinguish between the two. I'm just going to look at those 
three different cards right now, gold, platinum, and reserve. If you're a minor Delta fan, <laughs> or let me put it another way, not interested in Delta elite status, <laughs> then the Delta gold card, which is $99 a year, um, with, you know, not only does it give you the things that a frequent or even just, let, let's call it a sort of a regular Delta flyer, like even if you just fly a few times a year, you might benefit from the free check bag each each time you go and, and other sort of like standard perks like that. But you also with 10K spend, get a hundred dollar Delta flight credit. So, you know, 10K spend, you're, you're sort of getting equivalent of 1% back on top of earning the miles for that spend. So it's it's not terrible from a, um, if, if you stop spending on that card at 10K, it's not terrible from a, a uh, point of view of, oh, you could have earned 2% back somewhere else. Right, right. So that could be a reasonable choice if you don't really care about status. And really, like you said, the free check bag alone could make back the annual fee for you with just a few mm -hmm. Delta flights a year. So yeah, I mean, that's a, a reasonable choice if you're not really into Delta Elite status. But if you are interested in Delta Elite status, then it becomes a lot easier to stay at a pop-up prison, I think, right? Because it's a lot easier I, to I think so. on the other cards. Yeah, because if you're interested in, in Delta Elite status, then you you almost need to have either a platinum or a reserve card. Either one with 25k spend, you get an MQD waiver. That means Delta's requirements of of dollar spend with them uh, in order to achieve an elite level that get goes away for any elite level up to platinum status if you spend 25k a year on either of these cards. But you also get MQMs which are medallion qualifying miles, which also help you earn those levels of elite status. Um, with the platinum card you get, which is $250 a year, um, each 25K spend up to 50K, you get 10K, 10,000 MQMs towards status. Okay. So, you know, again, you're, if you're seeking Delta elite status each year, uh, spend 25K at least on the platinum card, and it gives you the waiver and the extra MQMs. Delta, uh, unlike what we talked about with Marriott before, once you hit an elite level, if you get more MQMs than you need for that elite level, they roll over to next year. So it's not really wasted earning extra uh, That's MQMs. Nice. That's nice. Yeah, It'll reduce your yeah. path for the next year or make it easier for you to reach the next level. So right, That's, right. Yeah. The, yeah, and the Platinum Card also gives you a uh, companion ticket each year upon renewal. So the $250 annual fee could be basically paid back if you use that companion ticket effectively each year. So th that's a really good sweet spot, I think, for frequent Delta flyers is that platinum card. Um, moving up to the reserve card is, you know, I think really for those who really want even more eliteness <laughs> and <laughs> who want to get into the sky club because the delta reserve card costs 550 dollars. having it gives you access to the delta sky club and actually uh amex centurion lounges on when you're flying delta and uh it, you'll get uh 15 000 mqms with thirty thousand dollars spend and you can do that up to four times each each year so up to 120 000 spend you could get uh the 15 000 mqms so you can actually get uh very <laughs> high level uh elite status with a single delta reserve card if you have a ridiculous amount of spend on it yeah so because i if i did the math right since you can do that four times you could end up with sixty thousand. MQMs and an MQD waiver. So that's more than enough for Delta Gold status. And that right. puts you on a path to platinum, right? Platinum is yeah. And like if, if you just flew, if you just flew 15,000, you know, miles or right. earned 15,000 MQMs other ways or have rolled over from previous year, you'll have platinum, which is which is great. And that's where you get things like the regional upgrade certificates as a choice benefit. So there's some good value to be had there. There you go. So I, and and the MQD waiver, by the way. For people who aren't familiar with Dalton or just listening to this and, and enjoy hearing the perspectives on these things, I, th I think, and correct me if I'm wrong, if you know, but I'm pretty sure that for platinum status, the MQD requirement is $15,000, I think. So I think that you normally you would have to spend 15 grand on Delta flights to get platinum status, no matter how many miles you fly, right? If you want to end up getting platinum status, if you, if you meet the MQD 
M requirement, the number of miles, you still need to spend like 15 grand on Delta unless you do the 25K spend on your card. And so that's what makes it appealing to get that MQD waiver because then you don't have to worry about spending $15,000 on Delta flights. So Right, right. I thought the 15,000 was for Diamond, but it doesn't matter. It's a uh, lot maybe of spend it's 10 and it's yeah, it's a lot. It, it, it's it, a it, lot of lot of Delta spend and and the great thing about the waiver is that you can, you know, not worry about um some people are are, are choosing to book Delta flights and even do things like pay for uh, pay for, um, what is it called? The comfort plus just to earn more MQDs, even though at your level of elite status, you're probably getting in the comfort plus automatically for free. Right. So people do crazy things like that, which Delta wants them to do to get right. more, uh, MQDs, but by getting the waiver, you can avoid that all kind that, of ridiculousness. All silliness. Yeah. So, all mm. right. So the Delta cards are a decent option if you like Delta, but if you're me and you don't live near a Delta hub and you don't yeah. fly Delta very often, though I do have Delta elite status make sense of that. Uh, <laughs> if you're not interested in getting the Delta cards, what else is there? So we talked so far about the Blue Business Plus and said that probably won't help. We talked about the Gold card, the uh, Blue Cash Preferred, and the Everyday Preferred Delta cards. What else? Let's talk Hilton. Hilton. So Amex has several Hilton cards. And let's start with, they have two $95 a year Hilton cards. There's a Surpass and the Business card. Both of them with $15,000 annual spend, you get a free night certificate. That's um, during normal years, it is good only for weekends. Um, this year, I think it's good for any day of the week if you earn it this year. Right. And um, they both also have some categories where they earn six points per dollar. So um, Hilton points are not worth a lot individually. You know, we've, we've seen them worth about 0.4 of a cent each, but once you get into six points per dollar, it's, it's a decent, decent return on your spend. Right. Even if you're only getting four tenths of a cent per point, then you're talking about around 2.4% cash back toward Hilton stays. So that's, you know, that's not bad. It's, it's not wildly exciting, but it's not bad. And it gets better if you're earning a free night certificate. So if you're able to do $15,000 spend in one of those 6X categories. For instance, the consumer card, the surpass card offers 6X at grocery stores, uh, at US supermarkets, I should say rather on up to, well, not an unlimited amount on that card, right? So, but if you do your $15,000 spend at 6X, you're going to end up with, what is it? 90,000 Hilton points plus a free night certificate. And if you leverage that free night certificate, well, if you're a Hilton person and you're into that, you can get tons of value out of that because that's valid at almost every Hilton property in the world. There's a very small list of exclusions and they aren't even the places that you would think would be excluded necessarily. It's not like, like the Waldorf Astoria Maldives is not an excluded place or the, you know, Conrad right, right. Maldives is not excluded. The exclusions are like all inclusives and, and um, uh, timeshare type properties. They're not necessarily the places that you would worry about being excluded. So, uh, so very few exclusions. You can use it almost everywhere in the world. And again, if you earn the certificate this year, it's valid any night of the week, but in a normal year, it's only valid on weekend nights. And keep in mind, weekend nights is, I think, Friday, Saturday, Sunday in the vast majority of the world. In the Middle East, I think it's Thursday, Friday, Saturday, although maybe that'll change because I think I've read about some countries changing up the weekend there. So I'm not sure. It, what it's true. Be long It'll be interesting to see if Hilton will uh, update because of that. Hopefully, um, hopefully they will just to make it easier to remember <laughs> what are, what is the weekend? Right. Right. Uh, yeah. So, so those are the two that, that I think are, are the most interesting for spend because uh, you only need $15,000 spend to get a meaningful benefit out of it. You could also with either of those spend $40,000 to get uh, diamond status with Hilton if that means anything to you, but you already get gold status just by having these cards. So um, you'd have to really love diamond to, to be worth that. And <laughs> if you do, you might, if you really love diamond, you might want to instead have the aspire card. Not even might want to, you want to have the aspire card, but that's not going <laughs> to help you stay out of pop-up prison because you're not really going to want to spend money on the aspire card. Yeah. I mean, in that one, you have to spend $60,000 a year Makes to get a, another free night. Otherwise you get a free night annually just by having the card. Well, that's true. Right? And I so, guess that's why, because yeah, you get, you get that just for having the card, you get a free night certificate every year. Again, issued this year, it's going to be valid any night of the week, but in normal years, weekend nights. So 
yeah, I mean, and that card is a great card. We've talked about it a bunch of times because it comes with a $250 airline incidental credit each year. It comes with a $250 resort credit each year. It comes with the free weekend night certificate all for 450 bucks. So, uh, you know, plus some right. other small benefits and diamond Hilton diamond status also. So it's a great card to have, but it's not necessarily a good card for spend because it doesn't share the same good six X categories that you can get on these $95 cards, the Hilton surpass and the Hilton business cards. So right, you're looking to stay right. out of pop-up and prison. It's not the card necessarily. To do yeah. It. And the business card, am I remembering right? That it was $60,000 spent on the business card. You can get another free night. I believe I'm remembering that I, right? I so, thought that yeah, go ahead. I, I believe so. Anyway, yes. if if that's true and if you can make good use of of its six X categories, which are admittedly not as good as the personal card six X categories because it doesn't include supermarkets, um, then you know, if you want to spend 60k for a free night, you'd be much better off with this business card than the than spending the 60k on the spire because uh Either way, you'll end up with a total of two free nights um, with either card because um, 60K, because the Aspire gives you a free night each year automatically. Um, and, you know, you would be able to earn up to 6X per, per uh, dollar, unlike the Aspire card, which would not give you that. Right, right. And, and you are correct. You get a second free night at 60K spent on the business card. Yeah. So, so all right. So the Hilton cards might be, a ticket out of pop-up prison. So, I mean, that's marginally good, right? That's not a bad list of things to get you out of pop-up prison. Yeah. I, I think it's also worth mentioning, by the way, that there have been some other opportunities like the referral offers that Amex has run in recent years that have sometimes given you the opportunity to earn an additional four points per dollar spend. And if you're able to refer someone and pick up one of those offers, then all of a sudden other cards could be worth spending on uh, when you add. I mean, obviously the cards we've talked about already would be potentially good, but even cards that aren't always good for spend, like the platinum card, for instance, you know, I, right. I, I wrote about earning a whole bunch of points, buying a car on that. And, and one of the reasons I earned so many points was because I had an offer for plus four points per dollar everywhere. And I have that on other cards also. And so a minimum of five points per dollar means almost all of my spend is going on various Amex cards right now. I'm hopefully buying a, a get out of jail free card for, for like ever. <laughs> <laughs> Let, let's hope that they they look at that spend positively. Hopefully, um, I don't know. Which I, I, I expect they do, but, but you could certainly imagine yeah. where they'd say let's not count that spend in the algorithm because because the consumer is getting so much back for it true but um that said there's one more brand we haven't talked about yet which is marriott so <laughs> i look at the marriott cards and the business card and the old what was the SPG card but the 95 dollar marriott card that amex has that you can't get new but you can product change to um Neither of those are good candidates, in my opinion, for spend. They're both good to have because they give you the annual free night certificate. So if you like that, it's, it's good to have. But um, would you spend on either one of those? I don't think I would. I mean, there's, there's no good reason to. I mean, not beyond you know the Bonvoy Brilliant card, I guess. You're going to spend your $300 a year at Marriott for the rebate. But uh, after that, no. And, and even... Even spending at Marriott properties is kind of questionable, right? Like 6X Marriott points is good, but there are other cards that earn transferable currencies that I could certainly see an argument for preferring one of those transferable currencies over six Marriott points per dollar anyway. So there's really not a lot of good use case for spending. I mean, is Amex going to do something about that? Like, <laughs> Yeah. Well, you know, it, it's interesting, you know, it, Maybe we'll know by the time people are listening to this podcast, but with with Chase announcing that they were going to be giving elite nights for spend with their card, how long will it be before Amex does the same? Because usually these Marriott enhancements go pretty much lockstep between Chase and, and Amex. So right. we'll see. We'll see about that. But the, the one use case, um, arguably, is for spending a lot on a... Marriott Amex card is the Bonvoy Brilliant, the $450 annual fee card. With $75,000 spend, you get platinum status. Yeah. Uh, yeah. That's a lot of spend for, for a benefit of, of sort of 
questionable value. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you know, we, I, I can remember back not that long ago to receiving an email from a reader who used to spend 75,000 annually on, I don't know, one of the Marriott cards for status and then was upset at some changes that happened. And I thought to myself, 75,000 on a Marriott card, there's just no Marriott card offering enough benefit to justify <laughs> yeah. that much spend, uh, you know, over just, if, cause if you're not staying at hotels enough, if you're saying so little that you need to spend $75,000 on the credit card to get the benefits, I question how much those benefits are worth. Uh, <laughs> right. But, you know, yeah, so that's a potential use case, I guess. And if you do spend $75,000 a year on your Marriott card and you don't get an automatic get out of jail free card forever, <laughs> then something's wrong with that. Max. Like, <laughs> that's right. That's somebody right. Somebody needs to rewrite the algorithm. <laughs> because, wow. Uh, right. Yeah, for sure. More beneficial for them um, than it is for you. But the no, business it, card it, has a like gas stations, right? And they have four X on gas stations on the business card. Yes. So yes, yeah. So, yeah, so maybe you're, you're right. There, there are some there's some situations where that makes sense. You can spend your way to gold status or something, yeah. something like that. And, and Amex <laughs> has run some uh, some temporary promos where they've offered like ten points per dollar mm. on PayPal with those cards sure. and things like that. And when those things happen, okay, then maybe you've got a decent reason to spend on those cards. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely, absolutely. And don't forget with the brilliant card, the four hundred fifty dollar card. There's all these rumors about them raising the price and and increasing the benefits considerably. At that point, if any of those rumors are true, they're likely to have some significant incentives for spend. So uh, keep an eye out for that uh, if it happens. We don't know, it's just a rumor at this point. Now here's a related question. How do retention offers factor into this? If I go after a retention offer, I you know, contact Amex and say that I'm thinking about canceling my card and they offer me some sort of a retention offer to stay, does that hurt me long term? Does that help me because it helps me put spend on the card? How does that play into this, Greg? Great question. I, I I have no idea for sure, you know, but my my gut tells me that it doesn't really play into it other than a lot of retention offers do require some spend in order to get them. And so that should be helpful because that's more spend on that card. But you know, my my guess is that the retention offers are sort of in their own sort of sandbox. Like, like if you accept a retention offer and then don't start using the card a lot, and then you call the next year to try to get another retention offer for the same card, you're unlikely to get one, but you know, so, so it's in its own little sandbox in that way, I, I think. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's, that's probably true. Uh, and, and along with that though, I think it's also worth mentioning that sometimes Amex runs authorized user or additional cardholder bonuses, and those can be worth taking up also. And again, I, I think that those probably are in their own little sandbox too. Uh, they can be another way to help encourage increasing some spending on cards to make it more rewarding for yourself. Now, again, I don't right. know for sure that Amex rewarding you in an outsized way for your spend isn't going to hurt you in terms of pop-up prison, but it may help because it will increase your overall spend on the card. I'm not really sure. You know, we don't really right. know what the algorithm takes into account, but I would think anything that helps you spend more is probably worth pursuing. So that might help justify more spend on your Amex cards if you get that sort of an offer. Uh, I think so. My, my guess is that when they look at you know, their algorithm to decide whether to put you in pop-up prison is, you know, looking at how much you've spent on your cards, how many times you've renewed a card with an annual fee, that sort of thing. And probably doesn't look at how many, you know, how much value and rewards you got along the way is that's just my guess. I, my and bad. that's, I think that's probably a reasonable guess. So, all right. So, you know, increase your spend on your existing cards. And, and anecdotally, that has helped some people get out of pop up prison, right? I mean, I think that's, that's why we're talking about this. I guess we didn't necessarily set that out at the beginning, but anecdotally, we've heard stories from people who were getting the pop up saying that because of their history with American Express, they wouldn't be eligible for a bonus. And then after peppering some spend around on their other existing Amex cards, that pop up has gone away. And so that's where this theory comes from. And of course, anything based on anecdotal evidence is only anecdotal. So we don't know for sure, but we have strong suspicions anyway, that that's going to help. That's right. That's right. All right. All right. So that are we on to? brings us to I'm... the post roast post roast time. 
All right. So I am go ahead. Unprepared. Unprepared. I'm, How I'm can you possibly post- be unprepared? Roastless. Roastless. No roast for roastless. me. Well, there we go. I'll take it. I'll take it. So my my roast for you is going to be a playful roast that you forgot when you posted about the Marriott cards that you can earn one elite night uh, for every 5,000 spend. But we talked about that already. Yeah. So uh, Greg's been roasted. He roasted himself. He beat me to the punch. So we're going to jump right into the question of the week. And so right. this week's question of the week, we had a few questions come in. We didn't ask us anything. We do those the second Wednesday of every month. And so we had a few questions that came in on our post about the ask us anything that we didn't get to during the ask us anything. So I wanted to toss one of these out for you, or maybe two, if your answer is fast, we'll see. So MA asks us, I've been able to maintain a pretty steady stream of membership rewards and ultimate rewards points through business card signups. And I'm starting to look at getting into cities ecosystem too. How do you collect a healthy amount of thank you points when they have such strict rules about sign up bonuses and no business cards? RIP the city business thank you card, uh, none of those things to churn. Would my only option be organic or manufactured spending? How do you earn a whole bunch of city thank you points, Greg? Yeah, uh, great question. So, yes, uh, I think that there, there are some sign up bonuses, but as you say, you're you're pretty limited to how many you can get. Um, if you can get in on the still floating around 80k city premier card offer, that that's a great one. But how do you go beyond that? Uh, I think is to take advantage of they have a great set of category bonuses that all can work together. So you know, get the custom cash card, which earns five points per dollar on up to $500 spend in the category you spend most each month. Um, shoot, if you can get several of those, <laughs> you, can, <laughs> you can maximize that. Uh, you can't sign up new for, for more than one, but you can probably product change from other cards to, to get more than one that way. Get the uh, the Premier card earns 3X for grocery and a num- number of other um, valuable categories. So, Dining so now you're, earning, and a lot you're of earning 5X in some categories, you're earning thir- 3X in, in others. And make sure you have the double cash for 2X everywhere else. And um, you know then also sprinkle in a rewards plus card so that when you go to redeem your points, you get a 10% rebate and get 10% of your points back after you redeem them. So that combination is, is a fantastic earning combination. And uh, they have a benefit uh, that they're MasterCards. So things like, you know, plastic bill payments, like you could pay your mortgage and stuff. So if you're working on a sign up bonus or city frequently sends out these like earn 5X on up to like $2,500 spend or whatever, you, you know, you could do things like pay your mortgage, pay your, um, your car payment um, through something like plastic, 2.8% fee. But if you're earning 5X or whatever, it's well worth it. And um, oh, because plastic doesn't allow that for like Visa and Amex, but they do for MasterCard. Yeah, definitely. So uh, there's a lot of different ways to earn those points on spend. Greg highlighted a bunch of great options there. So to answer the part of the question about, you know, is it just organic and, and or manufactured spending, the only ways to earn points? Certainly, A, there are lots of rewarding ways to spend, like Greg said, but to add one more rewarding way to spend that is perhaps a little bit outside of that uh, is retention offers. City has long been known for very generous Great retention point. offers. So not only can you earn the welcome bonus, but then call in before the year first, you know, when your first year is up, or sometimes even more often than that, call in every now and then and ask if there are any offers available to, you know, entice you to keep the card, to reward you more for using the card, et cetera. And sometimes City has really generous retention offers that are almost like getting another sign up bonus. So that can be a way to kind of sort of double up on your sign up bonuses. I mean, you're not going to get 80,000 points, but you're going to get potentially decent offers anyway. Absolutely. And, you know, when you call to get, try to get a retention offer, you often have to tell them that you want to cancel the card in order to get them to, you know, send you to the retention specialist or to unlock the, the computer uh, system that, that, that gives you these offers. But don't, do, don't say that to the computer because <laughs> people have, people have uh, made the mistake of, of calling, getting the automated system and 
you know, what do you want to do? I want to cancel my double cash card or whatever. And then, then the system's like, okay, it's canceled by, um, right. you know, right. you, so you don't want, want to say that so- to the automated system that picks up. You want to speak to a representative. That's what you want right, to do. Right. And then once you have a, a, a representative that is, um, willing to work with you, you know, after they give you a retention offer for the card you called about, ask them if they could look at your other cards. So, you know, I've had, I've had a single rep, like go through like eight different cards of mine to see if what offers are on them. And, and frequently there's, there are good offers for a number of them. And uh, so that's a great way to do it. And it's interesting that Often you have good offers, even for no fee cards. So don't, don't be afraid to try that approach with a fee free card. There you go. There you go. One other tip, by the way, and you know, Greg, we said that the automated system has been known to close cards on people. So if you call and you say, you want to speak to a representative and you talk to a representative and they have to transfer you to the retention team and it's taking forever to get to the retention team. Don't hang up. Don't hang up (laughs) because they may just go ahead and close the card. (laughs) As really? per your request. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, I didn't know that. Thanks for that, wow. City. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, uh, yeah, Th- be careful. <laughs> make sure you have time <laughs> on your hands when you make that call and get to a human being and explain that you're considering wow. canceling and want to know if there are any offers available. So, good, good, good safety tip. Yeah, Thank you yeah, for that. Yeah. Don't hang up and figure, oh, you know what? I'll just call back later when I have more time. Bad decision. Bad decision. Don't do it. <laughs> okay. You sound like someone who knows. From I'm just saying, I'm just saying, you know what I mean? <laughs> All right. So that brings us, I think, to the end of today's episode. So I want to thank you guys for being out there with us today. If you've enjoyed this episode and you want to get our posts in your email inbox, you want to go to frequentmiler.com slash subscribe. Again, that's frequentmiler.com slash subscribe to join our email list. You can follow us on all the various social medias. We're on Instagram and Facebook. You can join our Frequent Miler Insiders Facebook group in order to converse with other folks who are interested in this stuff. Wherever you're listening to this or watching this, please subscribe, like, enable notifications, leave us a comment. All of those things help the algorithm so that more people can enjoy this show too. And feel free to share it with your friends and family. Thank you for being out there with us today. And we will see you again next week. Yeah. One last thing. If you want to leave feedback for us to read in the giant mailbag or to ask as the question of the week, then email us at mailbag at frequentmiler.net. We'll see you next time. Bye. Bye.